only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar, Helping Homeowners. We have a special guest today. We have Joy Bryant from the St. John's Housing Partnership and um, I'm Sherry Davidson with Davidson Realty and we will be um, talking a little bit today about what the St. John's Housing Partnership does, Joy's role there. Um, Joy has helped a lot of homeowners and we'll get into a lot of detail of ways that she might could help you or someone you know. Joy, how about telling everyone a little bit about yourself? Hello, my name is Joy Bryant. I'm with St. John's Housing Partnership. I'm the foreclosure mitigation counselor, one of them for St. John's Housing Partnership. I've been doing this for going on five years um, with our local nonprofit. We are a nonprofit and we service St. John's County residents who are having a problem paying their mortgage or already behind on their mortgage or about to get behind on their mortgage and we try to assist them with any modification um, process that everybody's trying to do. And I'm local from here, born and raised in St. Augustine, been here all my life and enjoy doing what I do. Great. Let's talk a little bit about the St. Housing Partnership and how it got started and what its purpose is. Um, the executive director, Bill Lazar, he started back in 1998 coming here from Jacksonville. Um, they didn't have a uh, nonprofit as what he started down here. He started it, um, you know, trying to do rehab work, uh, revitalizing neighborhoods, uh, weatherization on, on some houses that needed in some repair and helping the low income on getting this done. And then he incorporated um, a counseling department for financial literacy, uh, budgeting, and credit repair um, for people in St. John's County who were in subprime mortgages and being taken for granted of using their, their, their houses that were paid off and getting scammed into loans that um, you know, were subprime and people were started losing their homes. So he wanted to promote that education in St. John's County, so he opened up the counseling part of St. John's Housing Partnership seven years ago, and it's been going ever since. Great. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of programs, and you've mentioned a few of them, that the St. John's Housing Partnership does. And, of course, the last thing our, on our list is, is your area, credit counseling. But if you want to tell us a little bit about any more of these programs. Um, yes. Um, so our programs, we, well, we have the programs that we have is affordability, affordable homes. That's where um, Bill Lazar has, has, has two housing developments, which is Affordable house built, Housing Builder, where we get down payment assistance. That's the Hancock Place and the Hazing Villa, Villas. These are three, three bedroom, two bath homes that are all green. Green is in their, they're the lowest cost you can have, Energy Star appliances. It makes it very, very affordable for the average St. John's County residents. Um, also, if you already have a home, we have the weatherization assistant program. This is where we come in and weatherize your house to lower the cost of your utility bills um, since the rates of all utility bills are going up now. The emergency repair program, that is the emergency repair. Um, it can be anywhere from a tree falling on your house to a wheelchair ramp that is now needed. Um, they go out there and build uh, those things that are needed for the house at that time. The neighborhood revitalization, that's where we've worked with St. John's County for over 15 years about revitalizing certain parts of St. John's County to make a safer neighborhood to, to live in and the area to live in. And then we have, again, our credit counseling services, which I stated started about seven years ago and what that involves. Okay, our credit counseling services, we offer um, different things in this. We start off by, well right now our services are basically foreclosure intervention, but we just don't start at foreclosure intervention. When we have a client and the way they go about coming to us, we don't advertise, but we have a lot of 
word of mouth, a lot of local realtors, attorneys, banks. We have the local legal aid that sends us a lot of our referrals. So we don't advertise, but we do have brochures everywhere that where people can come, call our office, and make an appointment. And if it is foreclosure uh, intervention, we send out a package. And once that client gets a package, we um, set them up in a workshop. At the workshops we have, which are conducted weekly on Tuesdays, we explain all the paperwork and why we need it all, and then also we provide uh, the workshops with an attorney there because a lot of legal questions need to be answered if a client is about to be in foreclosure or has credit card debts and they can't pay their credit cards but they need to save their house. So we provide a attorney there where they can ask all their legal questions and we are starting to um, have real estate companies come and, and tell about their involvement with short sales if we cannot get the modification done, but our agency tries to get a modification of for, forbearance or some kind of help for the client to stay in the house. If the client, if we've exhausted all of our things and the client cannot stay in the house, that's where we partner up with another agency, for example, a real estate agency who has a lot of training in foreclosures and short sales, and they assist the client. We still continue with them. Uh, for the short sales, and then we also assist clients in feed and lose, and if anything, the last subject would be bankruptcy, which we would send them to um, legal aid or give them a list of attorneys, consumer attorneys that can assist them through there. But even through, if we have exhausted all of our things that we cannot help out the client on saving their house, we still have other agencies that we work with to put them in rental housing or call up and, and, and know they need a place to stay, put them where the family can be safe. Then after we get over that, we, we continue with them through credit repair, financial literacy, budgeting because there's still stuff out there that they still need help with. We just don't let them go because their house got foreclosed on or they short sold it or you know, they had to turn it back into the bank. Even through a modification, we still stress to clients to come back to us so we can assist them um, so they don't make this mistake again and don't get in the same bind they were in, you know, where they were going through the foreclosure or needing a modification. That's great, Joy. Um, it, so when someone first contacts you, you get them the paperwork and invite them to a workshop. And after they come to the workshop, um, you're going to decide if they might qualify for a modification. Is that correct? Um, um, when they come to the workshop and they have all the paperwork, usually a client will, there's a variety of them, will say that they've already done this three or four times, but that's where the counseling part comes in. Cassie Barber and I are the counselors for St. John's Housing Partnership, and we have the training to know what would work with the bank and what will not work with the bank. And it could be something so simple as in the client needs to quit paying three minimum payments to a, to a credit card for them to save their home. That's where we come in. So usually when we have clients come in and come to those workshops, they're not turned away for any reason. I mean, we usually take them in, get all their paperwork in, do have an appointment with them, discuss their options, and if we think that we cannot get a modification, that's where we start, you know, going our other routes of where to refer them to or what they might want to do, what they might want to think of. If they can't afford their house, they need to, you know, come to terms with that, tell them that we do have rental houses or we can help them find somewhere where their family can go because a lot of families don't want to move out of their neighborhoods. So that's where we rely on local uh, real estate agencies or the county um, to keep the family near where the kids don't have to change a school. And we do have a lot of partnerships with uh, other realtor agencies who do re do rentals and know the, the circumstance, like the person doesn't have good credit, but they've been living here. This is how much they can afford. And that's where the counselor comes in of telling the realtor, they can only afford $1,200 a month in rent. Do you have anything for that? Their credit's not bad, but this is a family of four. 
I, I know that at 1200 they'll be able to afford this and you know and, and talk it over because you know it's really hard to get out there and just say and try to rent something if if you don't know the person and they're just trying to rent a house and see that they're in foreclosure they're not going to want to rent from them okay so the modifications that you you help the person with the paperwork you arrange the paperwork, you help them get a great package, and you help them file for a modification. Um, what, if someone gets a modification, what are you seeing? Are you seeing interest reductions? Are you seeing principal reductions? Are you seeing extensions? A look. Um, we're seeing a variety of different modifications. Um, with our package, what we do is we do, we, we have the client come in, we do a whole package. We send it to the lender because the client might have already sent some things in, but we send in what the lender needs to have in order to make a modification. And then we continue with follow-up. We have a processor who works with us, Becky Oltz, and that's all she does is stays on the phone and calls lenders all day long on all of our files to see if we need updated paycheck subs, where their file is, has it been you know, sent to a negotiator to work on the file. And us having that upkeep in that, uh, instead of relying on the client uh, to do that, is what made us successful. But when we do get modifications, we see a variety of modifications. But lately, we have been seeing um, the deferred balance, where they'll take, you know, 70000 off the, the principal balance and defer it out there at a zero interest for like 50 years it's still going to have to be paid for if you ever sell your house 10 years down the road or something like that but it'll make the payment affordable for that client to stay in the house um, it's all according what the 31 percent of the clients gross income regarding the interest rate if that'll fluctuate but if the interest rate is usually you know 6.5 or almost 7 percent we usually see an interest rate on the modifications down to 5 percent um, we have seen the making homes affordable where they start the step rate at 2 percent and then the for the first five years and then 3 percent at the second you know at year six 4 percent at year seven and then whatever the going rate at that time on the uh, Freddie Mac market value rate it would be that percent rate for the next from year 8 to 30 or 8 to 40. Some lenders extend the years uh, from 30 years and amortize it back out to 40 years. Um, they are kind of trying to keep the client in the house, and th but that's the, the, the greatest amount they can extend the terms. A lender can only extend the terms to 40 years, and the lowest they can drop the rate is 2%. That's for the Making Homes Affordable program, and that is for in-house modification. Um, so, you know, we do have guidelines, and they have guidelines of the farthest they can go out. And on the principal reduction, we see a lot more of those with the uh, Fannie Mae's, Freddie Mac's, because they had private mortgage insurance, and they can just write it off like a car accident. They can write off for that amount. You still owe it, but they're getting some money for it through the insurance company from the private mortgage insurance or FHA where you had put three and a half percent down before that. Um, you know, VA had where you make your payment like a private mortgage insurance through VA loans and stuff like that. So they can they can get some of that back, the lender does, plus make the modification. That's great information. And um, I think Joy's success rate is amazing because we've seen a lot of people apply for um, modifications on their own and, and some of our agents have tried to assist them and um, haven't had a great success rate and I think um, they just know the formulas that work and are able to do that. Um, we, the foreclosure mitigation, is is that any different than the modifications? Um, um, the mitigation is the same as us mitigating something for the modifications. Um, we also do mediation. Mediation is where uh, we do the Circuit 7 mediation for Upchurch, and that is where a
client has already been to foreclosure, they have been served their foreclosure papers, and that's where it goes to mediation. And we take those clients in for St. John's County also, where you come in and we try to do a package like we would do on a modification. And it's this almost the exact same package, we just have to send in different details for the Supreme Court purposes. And then we continue with the lender on that. Um, we try to get the modification before it goes to mediation. Mediation is a conference that is set up um, with a mediator who usually are attorneys. They don't have to be attorneys, but usually they are. A client will go to this mediation and a mediator from the lender side will be there. There will be a conference call and the client will be there and they try to mediate a solution going into that and then there's a head mediator which is like a judge mediator that makes sure everything is going the way it goes. Um, now with the mediation program, uh, clients usually don't have attorneys go with them and they get there and they're scared. That's where we have stepped in lately and given a detailed list of what they're going to look like or what they're going to want at that mediation. And we ask them, you, you know, like just number this page, you go straight down it because you're going to be nervous anyway because you think you're in a court situation, which you are. And it's helped out a couple of clients. Um, clients have gone and hired attorneys to go to mediations and they can get them for, you know, um, I don't know what the attorney's charges are. And, and counselors, Cassie and I have gone to a couple of mediations ourselves. And the banks have been letting us talk on their behalf because we're throwing out numbers and knowing, do, talking the same lingo the bank is and trying to get somewhere. So that's helped out a lot um, the, um, for us in St. John's County through mediation where we're stepping ahead compared to other counties where they don't know the clients just going to mediation don't know what to do and not get the settlement or getting it, it's called an impasse where they don't settle and they just walk out and they end up losing their home again in the long run anyway. So we've stepped up that notch in mediation also. That brings a question up for me. Um, how much time do you have to have? If someone doesn't seek help until somewhat the last minute where they've actually got a foreclosure date, can they still contact you and get help? Yes, we've, we've actually <laughs> Um, it's funny, last October 29th, that's my son's birthday, we had six sale dates on that day, and I refused to have anybody lose their house on my son's birthday to make my day a bad day. We have been able to save every one of those houses, and that was six on October 29th, and we're still working with some of them, but we haven't lost any of those houses on that. So even with the sale date, it's harder for us but we're able to, with assistance of the legal aid attorneys, jumping in there, having an attorney go in there and try to stop the sale date and write a motion or something and go explain it to Judge Trainer. Judge Trainer will, you know, give me, uh, as a counselor, um, you, know, thir you know, 60 to 90 days. Um, if they find that the attorney will go in there and look for fault into the foreclosure papers and try to stop it some way. And if not, there's uh, the attorneys have been real successful with Legal Aid. Legal Aid went to Judge Trainer and asked um, if they could uh, have this time because the lenders were telling me as a counselor they need 90 to 120 days. So when they're served foreclosure, you know, the attorney's like, wait a second, you know, they're trying to move up the process so Judge Trainer has the joy motion out there, which stops it for 90 to 120 days. There's a 30-day motion that attorney can file for 30 days, and then there's a joy motion for another 90 days. And Judge Trainer allowed that because of what the lender told me of the timeline they needed. So he thinks that the lender needs that timeline that the client should have that right also. So that's where that comes in. But it's easier to work out something before the foreclosure process, um, but with foreclosure, we have the attorney's help from Legal Aid, so it makes an easy transition on us also. Great. Um, I don't know if there's anything about this slide you'd like to talk about. Um, 
it's kind of a, a combination, I guess, of things we've already been talking about. This, this, this slide that we have here, it's, it's basically of our counseling approach of how we do everything. We try to make everything a full circle no matter what we do. If it's your first time home buyer, we assist you with application. We put you on the budget. If you need credit repair before you can buy a house, we do that. We teach you the financial literacy of owning a home. We do affordability tests to see what, how much of a home you can afford. And then we also offer the home buyer education class, um, which is required um, by all the local lenders here. Then if you take that same model and do like foreclosure uh, mitigation, you know, we assist the client with the application process of sending in the modification to it. Um, during that time, we, we create a budget that the client can live on while we're doing this modification. Uh, you know, if they're behind on credit um, cards or something, we can work with them on their credit cards by offering settlements, saving money for settlements and getting those out of the way, or we'll deal with them after we get through the modification process. Um, financial literacy, that's just basically still explaining to the client uh, why they're doing this, why your interest rate went up, uh, how one interest rate on one credit card went up because and you were never late. It's called a universal um, fault. So that's the financial literacy. And then the affordability test through a modification, we can tell them you cannot afford this house or this is what you can't afford. And if the lender won't do a principal reduction, then you know we have to look elsewhere. And then the home buyer education, that really doesn't go back into that, but that's where we you sign the modification. And after you sign the modification, that's where we still encourage you to come back for credit repair and budgeting and making sure you don't get into that um, gray area again. But that's with that circle of counseling is the reason I think we stay together and keep it going and the clients are are getting what they need. That concludes our presentation. Um, unless Joy you've got anything else you'd like to add to um, um, we just moved offices. Uh, we were having offices that were donated by Bank of St. Augustine and Prosperity Bank, but we've upgraded to have our new office now. It's at 93 Orange Street. Um, our phone numbers have changed. Um, our phone number is 819-1266, and our new fax number is 819-1268. But my email address has, has been the same for going on five years, and that's all lowercase sjhp. J-O-Y at bellsouth.net and we have another counselor, Cassie Barbara, and she's the same email address but it's C-A-S-S-Y. But um, you know we have a great staff and you can get a hold of one of us and, and see us at our new location.